Okay, in today's video, I thought I'd go over one more problem involving uh, elastic collision, and this is uh, going to be nuclear elastic collision. That's what might occur in a particle accelerator. So we're going to be using nuclear particles, but it's really the same thing, masses and velocities. So in this case, we have a proton. It has a mass of 1.01 .01 atomic mass units. It's traveling with a speed of 4.50 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, and it's going to collide elastically. So we'll say it's a perfectly elastic collision with a helium nucleus. The mass of that helium nucleus is 4.00 atomic mass units. And that helium nucleus is at rest. And we want to know what are the velocities of the proton and the helium nuclei uh, after the collision. Now, we have the units here for mass and atomic mass units. And we could convert those into kilograms. There's a direct relationship between the atomic mass unit and the um, kilogram. But we don't need to do that. We can just leave an atomic mass unit as long as we have the mass the same for both particles. So I'm just going to write everything down here. The mass of the proton and its initial velocity. Then we have the mass of the helium nucleus and its initial velocity. It's standing still. It's at rest, so it's zero meters per second. That's important to remember. And then I just like to draw a quick picture. And oh yeah, we want to find the final velocities of, this is the final velocity of the proton. This is the information for the proton, mass, initial, and final velocity. And of course, this is the helium nuclei. This is helium, this is helium initial and helium final, not high and half or something like that. That's helium initial and final. And then I think it's just good. Just draw a quick little picture. You, not really too much to draw, but just gives you a little time to think about it. Remember the helium nucleus is at rest. So we could put here at rest or velocity zero or something like that. Okay, so on the next slide, we're just gonna take the information with us and we're gonna get out our equations that we use to calculate the uh, final velocities for, I put uh, velocity one, that's for the proton, we'll say, and the final velocity two, that is for the helium nucleus like that. Okay, and we're just gonna do the proton first. It's basically kind of an algebra problem now, so to speak. So this is the final velocity of the proton and we have m1 minus m2, m1 plus m2, the initial velocity of particle number one, which is our proton. And then we have m2, m1, m2, and v2 over here. Now this is m1 and this is m2. You'll notice here, we on the end here, this is important to note, and notice when we have the second particles at rest, this is the initial velocity of the helium nucleus. It is zero. So zero times this term is zero. So basically that part of that term just goes away because it's zero and makes it a little simpler. We can just plug the values in. Now we have the final velocity of the proton, m1 minus m2 plus m1 plus m2, and not plus, divided by m1 plus m2, multiplied by the initial velocity of the proton. If we do all that, we get Remember, it's important to notice here this is a negative number. Don't forget the negative sign because this is 1.01 .01 minus 4. So this is negative divided by 5.01 times that gives us a negative number. And that means that when the helium, no, when the proton collides with the helium nucleus, it's going to bounce off and go back in the opposite direction with this speed. So this is the direction of the motion in the other opposite direction because that initial velocity was positive. Now it's negative going back in the other direction and this is its speed. Okay, so that is for the proton velocity. Now we're going to do the same thing with the helium. This is helium. This is V2. It's for our helium. This is uh, M1. This is M2. So we have the same kind of equation. And you'll notice once again here, the initial velocity of mass number two, which is the helium, is still zero. So that means that that term goes away because the initial velocity of the helium is zero. Simplifies again. Plug the values in, we have two times 101 because that's the mass of number one, the proton, divided by the sum of the two masses multiplied by the initial velocity of the proton. And we get that the final velocity of the helium is 1.81 times 10 to the six meters per second. Okay, so that's all there is to it. All right, we had a helium nucleus at rest, collided elastically with a proton, that was traveling with 4.0 times 10 to 6 meters per second. The final velocity of the proton is negative, so that means it bounces off and goes back in the other direction. And the helium, it's a more massive particle, you'll notice that it travels off to the right with a velocity of 1.81 times 10 to the 6. Okay, and it's a good thing why I didn't actually do that in this video, but you could check the uh, momentums before and the momentums after and see if you get 
uh, the same value because for elastic collisions, momentum is conserved, and you can also check the kinetic energies. Don't forget that this is a negative sign. You'll need that when you do the momentum because momentum is a vector. So you'll be subtracting one from the other. Okay, so there you go. We went through that kind of quickly. Just did one more problem for elastic collisions involving nuclear particles. It's kind of the same thing as uh, other kinds of particles. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget sharing is caring share this video with all of your friends show them how much you care thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video